Okay, so here I have a door, and I like to make it so that whenever the player walks into the door, the door opens. Also, to make things a bit harder, I would also like to make it so that whenever the player walks into the door, we see it open for them as well. So here's how I go about doing so. Now to start off with, the first thing I'm gonna do. Now to start off with, now to start off with, we're first gonna make the now to start off with. Now to start off with, we're first gonna now to start off with with now to start off with, we're first gonna make it open for the local player. But before we do that, we first need to create some animations of the door being open and closed. So first we wanna So first we need to bring up the animation tab. So first So first we need to bring up the animation tab. I'm just gonna come up to the um <coughs> I'm just gonna come up to the top of my Unity window and go window animation animation or control six for the shortcut. And I'm gonna drag and drop this window and I'm gonna and I'm gonna drag and drop this window down to my and I'm gonna drag and drop this window down to my project window. Then then <coughs> <coughs> then I'm going to select my parent. Then I'm going to select my parent object. Then I'm going to select the parent object of my doors. I'm going to go over to the animation tab and hit create. Mm. Then I'm going to select my parent game. Then I'm going to select the parent object of my doors. Then I'm going to select the parent of the. Then I'm going to select the parent object of my doors. I'm going to come down to the animation tab and hit create. Now we need a name for this animation, and I'm going to call this door open. With the animation made, we'll see that it also created an animator on our parent game object. With the animation, with the animation name, with the animation made, with the animation made, we'll also see it created an animator on our parent game object. Anyways, anyways, now I'm gonna hit the, anyways, now I'm gonna hit the record button on my animation tab. Anyways, now I'm gonna hit the record button on my animation tab. Select one of my doors and move it while holding Control to snap its location. And then I'm gonna do the same for the other door. Coming down to the animation tab, I'm then going to move the header one frame forward. Coming into the animation tab, I'm going to move the header one frame forward. Coming, coming down to the animation tab, coming down to the animation tab, I'm going to move the header one. <coughs> coming down, coming down to the animation tab, I'm going to move the header one frame forward. I'm going to grab these two nodes and go Control C, Control V to create an animation of one step. <coughs> I'm going to grab these two. <coughs> I'm going to grab these two nodes and I'm going to grab these two nodes and go control C control V to create an animation of one step. As far as I'm aware, if you don't do this, it will by default create an animation of one second long instead of just being one frame. So as far as I'm aware, if you don't do this, it will by default create an animation of one second long instead of just being one frame. So with our first animation done, we now need to create our closed animation. So I'm going to hit this drop down menu and hit create new animation. And I'm going to call this one, and I'm going to call this new one. Mm. So, so, so I'm going to hit this drop down menu and hit create new animation. And I'm going to call this new one door closed. So I'm going to hit this drop down menu and hit create new animation. And I'm going to call this new one door closed. Hitting the record button again for this animation. I'm just going to give it, hitting the record button again for this animation. I'm just going to give each door a little wiggle while holding control to record where it is. To record where the door is by default. Then coming to its nodes again. Then coming to its nodes again. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V again. And now we'll have our animations. And now we'll have our animations of the door being opened and closed. I'm just going to. Then coming to its nodes again. I'm going to hit Control C, Control V again. And now we have our animations of the door being opened and closed. I just want to. I just want to stop recording. I'm going to come back to the project window. I'm going to select our animations that we've created one by one. I'm going to select up. I'm going to select the animations we've created one by one, and come up. To, I'm going to select the animations that we've created one by one, and come up here and disable loop time so the animations don't loop. Now that we have our animations sorted, now that we have our animations sorted, we need to see when we want them to play. Now that we have our animations sorted, we need to see when we want them to play. So we first want to come up. So we just want to come to our parent game object and double click the animator to open it. Now that we're in the animator, we can see our two. Now that we're in the animator, we can see our two animations. Before we change anything here, however, we first want to come up to the parameters tab and hit the plus button and create a ball. Before we change anything, however, we first want to come up to the parameters tab and hit this plus button to create a ball. Before we change anything, however, we first want to come up to our parameters tab and hit this plus button and we want to create a ball. I'm going to call this ball is open. Then I'm going to come into our graph. Then I'm going to come into our graph. 
And as we want the door to be closed by default, I'm going to select my door closed animation and I'm going to right click and select set layer as default state. And, and as we want the door to be closed by default, I'm going to come up to my door closed animation and I'm going to right click and select set layer as default state. I'm then going to right click the animation and select make transition and I'm going to make a transition from door close to door open and then just and then do the same the other way. Then I'm going to select one of my then I'm going to select one of my transitions and then I'm going to select one of, then I'm going to select one of my transitions and in the inspector we want to change a couple of settings. So I want to so I want to hit the drop down menu and in the settings tab we want to disable has exit time because we don't want any delay before the animation is played. So I want to hit the drop down menu and in the settings tab we first want to disable has exit time because we don't want any delay before the animation is played. Next is the transition duration and because our animations are just the door being fully open or fully closed we want to use the transition smoothening in order to smoothly open and close the door. The value shown here the value shown here will say how long the door will take to open. The value shown here will the value shown here will say how long the door will take to open, and in my case, the default value of 0.25 looks good. But feel free to change this. But feel free to change this value to change the speed of the door. But feel free to change this value just to. But feel free to change this value. But feel free to change this value to change the speed of the door. Then for in, then for interruption source, we want to select next state, and this will just mean that the animations, and this will just mean that the animation can be interrupted, so the door doesn't have to fully open before it can close again. Now we just want to. Now we just want to select what trans. Now we just want to say. Now we just say when we want this transition to play. So I'm going to come down to condition. Now we just say when we want this transition to play. So I'm just going to come down to conditions and hit this little plus button to create a condition. To create a condition. Now the default is actually what we want here, but to explain, we want it so that whenever the parameter is open equals true, we want it to play this transition, transition from door closed to door open. Now the default value Now the default is actually what we want here. Now the default values are actually what we want here, but to explain, we want it so that whenever the parameter is we want it so that whenever the parameter is open equals true, we want it to play this transition, transitioning from door close to door open. So now so now we just want to select So now I cool. Cool. So now we just want to select our uh, cool. So now we just want to select my other transition and give it the same settings, but for its condition but for its condition, I want to set it. Cool. So now, cool. So now I just want to select my other transitions and give it the same settings. But for its condition, I want to make it. I want to make it so that it only transitions. I want to set it so that it only transitions. I want to set it so that. I want to set it so it only transitions when is open equals false. I want it to transit. I want to. I want to set it so it only transitions when is open equals false. So now, in summary, when the game begins. Awesome. So now in summary, awesome. So now in summary, when the game begins, I want to play. So now in summary, when the game begins, it will play the animation door closed. When it sees is open ball equal true, it will transition from door closed to door open. And when the ball equals false again, it will transition from door closed. It will transition from door open to door closed. So now, so now our animation, so now our animator should be fully set up. We just want to test it. So now our animator should be fully set up. We just want to test it in game. So now our animator should be. Let me write that down. So now our animator should be fully set up. <coughs> so now our animator should be fully set up. So now our animator should be set up fully. Ugh. So now our animator should be fully set up. We just want to test it in game before we do any udon logic. So I'm just going to drag and drop my animator window down into this little corner here, and then hit play, and then hit and then hit play. And then hit play. Mm. So now I'm just going to drag and drop my animator window down to this little corner here and then hit play. Now that we are playing, now that we are playing, I just want to close the menu, hold down tab and come down to our animator window and toggle the is open ball on. We can see, we can now, we can now see that when the is open ball equals true, we can now see that when, we can now see that when we toggle the is bow, we can now see that when we toggle the is open ball on, we'll see the door open. And when we click it again, we'll see the door close. Sweet! So now we have our animator set up and working, it's time to create our Udon logic. I'm just gonna stop playtesting. And now and now we and now we need to create a trigger zone to detect when the player walks in and now we need to create a trigger zone to detect when a player walks near the door so we can tell it to open. 
Now, in my case, now in my case, I just want to. Now, in my case, I just have a void outside my hallway. Now, in my case, I just have a void outside my hallway. Now, in my case, I just have a void outside my. Now, in my case, I just have a void outside my hallway. So I'm just going to use a sphere collider that clips. Mm. Now, in my case. Now, in my case, I just have a void outside my hallway, so I'm just going to use a sphere collider that clips past the sides of my hallway. So, I'm just going to use a sphere collider that clips past the sides of my hallway. Feel free to use a different collider to better suit your use case. Feel free to use a different collider to better suit your use case. Now, I'm just going to Now, I'm just going to select the parent. Now, I'm just going to select my Now, I'm just going to select my parent game object in the hierarchy. I'm going to right click, Freddy object, sphere, and I'm going to move it down a I'm going to move it down I'm going to move it down a bit and then scale it up to cover the entire door space and then some extra. I then want to delete its mesh renderer and mesh filter as you won't be needing to make this trigger visible to the player. And then I want to come over to my collider and select is trigger and make it true. Now before we go any further I'm just going to rename this sphere to door trigger and last but not least I'm going to come down and hit this add component button and create an unum behavior component. Now we just set now we just need a script to go inside this Udon behavior component. So I'm going to come over. So I'm going to come. So I'm going to come over. So I'm going to come over to my project window. I'm going to right click, create via chat Udon Udon Graph Program Asset, and I'm going to call my script Door Trigger Logic. And I'm going to call my script Door Trigger Logic. Now I just want to reselect my trigger and drag and drop our new Udon script into this Udon behavior component. And then I want to open up the Udon Graph. Okay, so now that we're in the graph. <coughs> okay, so now we're in the graph. Okay, so now that we're in the Okay, so now that we're in the graph, it's time to create our logic. Now the first thing we want to Now the thing we want Now the thing that we want the script to do is we want to tell our anime tour to change the bool is open whenever the player walks into the trigger. Now Now the thing that we want the script to do is we want to tell the anime tour to change the bool is open whenever the player walks into the trigger. I hit the table. Now the thing we want Now the thing we now the thing we want the script to do is we want to tell our anime tour to change the ball is open whenever the player walks into the trigger. So the script needs to know So the script needs to know what anime tour contains the ball. To do that, we need to come up to our variables tab and hit this little plus button. To do that, we need to come over to the variables tab and hit the plus button to create a variable and I'm gonna call this and I'm gonna create an anime tour variable. And I'm gonna create an anime tour variable. To do this, we need to come over to the variables tab and hit this little to do to do that we need to come up to the to do that we need to come up to the variable tab to do that we need to come up to the variables tab and we want to hit this plus button to create a variable and I'm going to create a animator variable I'm going to call this anim for short and then I'm going to hit this drop down menu and make it public so we're able to select it inside the inspector then I just want to drag and drop the variable into our graph and I'm going to put it into an animator set bool node I'm going to I'm going to change the node from int to string plug our animator into the instance slot and then we need to, and then we need to give it the. I'm going to change the node from int to string. I'm going to plug our animator into the instance slot, and then we need to give it the name of the ball that we want it to change. So I'm just going to copy and paste the name from my animator window into the string slot. And lastly, we need to, and lastly we need to make it tell, and lastly we need to make it tell that the ball, and lastly we need to tell it to make the ball equal true. So I'm just going to tick this checkbox. So I'm just going to tick this checkbox. <coughs> And lastly, we need. And lastly, we need. And lastly, we need. And lastly, we need to. And lastly, we need to make it. And lastly, we need to make the ball equal true. So I'm just going to tick this checkbox. So now, whenever this node is called, it will tell the animator to find the parameter is open and make it true. Now we. Now we just need to say when we want this node to be. Now we just. Now we just need to say when we want this node to be played. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create an event on trigger enter node. Now this event will be called whenever any player walks into the trigger. So we first now this event will be called whenever any player walks into the trigger. So as so as we are first going to make the door only open for the local player, we need to check it was the local player that walked into the trigger and not another player. Now this event will be called whenever any player walked into the trigger. So we're first going to make the now this event will be called whenever any player walked into the trigger. So as we're first going to make this now this event will be called whenever any player walked into the trigger. So as we're first gonna make the door only open for the local player, the nah. So as we're first gonna make the door only open for the local player, we need to check if it the we need to check if it was the local player that walked into the trigger and not another player. To do so, I'm gonna grab this player API and I'm gonna put it into a player API is local node. 
And then we need to create a branch node by holding down B and right clicking and then link it all up. Now, if we grab the true arrow and plug that into our animator set ball node, now whenever a player walks into the trigger, it will check to see whether or not that player is the local player. And if it is the local player, it will play the animator set ball node, making our is open ball equal true. Now we just want to, now we just want to do the same for, now we just want to do the same for the event on player trigger exit, but we want to untick the value on our animator set ball node to make the ball equal false instead. Awesome, so that's all the logic that we need for now. Awesome, so that's all the logic that we need for now. I'm just gonna hit, <coughs> I'm just gonna hit compile and come back into our scene view. Then coming back into our Udon behavior component, we need to tell our animator, hmm. then coming back into our, then coming back into our Udon, then coming back to our Udon behavior component, we need to tell it our animator. So I'm just gonna drag and drop my parent game object that contains our animator into the slot. So I'm just gonna drag and drop my parent game object that contains the animator into the slot. And now it's time to play test. So I'm just gonna hit play. And now that we're in the world, we can see that whenever the player walks into the door, the door opens. And when we walk out of the trigger, the door closes. We can also spam this and we can see that, we can also spam this and we can see that, we can also spam this and we can see that it behaves totally fine. Awesome. Okay, so this logic works perfectly fine, but if we wanted to make the, okay, so this logic works perfectly fine, Okay, so this logic works perfectly fine, but what if we wanted the door to open for all players and not just the local player? Well, that's where the code gets a little bit more complicated in order to deal with some edge cases. Well, that's where the co well, that's where our code gets a little bit more complicated in order to deal with some Well, that's where our code gets a little bit more complicated in order to deal with some edge cases. So, first of all, we just want to come back So, first of all, we just want to come back into our graph. So, first of all, we just want to come back into our graph. And the first and obvious change that we want to do is we just and the first and obvious change that we just want to do and the first and obvious change that we want to do is we just want to get rid of this player API is local check and plug our on player trigger into node directly into our animator set ball node. So now whenever any player walks into the trigger, it will open the door, and when any player walks out of the trigger, it will close the door. However, while this would work if only one However, while this would work if there was only ever one player in the door at any given time, the script really falls apart when there are multiple players. If I was to play, if I was to play this with multiple players, <coughs> if I was to play this with multiple players, we can see that when one player walks into the trigger, it opens the door for both players. If they exit the door, it will close. However, if a second player walks into the trigger, we can see that it also looks fine. But when one of those players walks out of the trigger, we see the door closes despite one player still being in the trigger. Despite one player still being in the trigger zone. This is because we are not checking how many players are inside the trigger zone. Mm. This is because we're not checking how many players are still inside the trigger. This is because we're not This is because we're not checking how many players are still inside the trigger. So when one pl So when one trick So when one play mm. This is because we're not checking This is because we're not checking how many players are still inside the trigger zone. So when one player leap This is because this is because we're not checking how many players are inside the trigger, so when one player leaves, it plays the event on player trigger exit, closing the door, closing the door for both players. This the solution to the solution to this the solution to this is to count how many players are still inside the trigger, and only if there are no players inside the trigger will we close the door. Okay, okay, so just come back into Okay, so we can just come back to our graph. To do this, we'll need to create an int variable to keep track of how many players are inside the trigger. I'm going to come up to our variable. I'm going to come up to our variables tab and hit this plus button and create an int variable. I'm going to call this counter. I'm just going to call this counter. We don't need. Uh, we don't need to make this public or anything, so we can just grab our counter variable and plug that into an int. Ad we don't need to make this public or anything, so we can just grab our counter variable and plug it into an int addition node. We're going to. We're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable. We're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable. We're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable. We're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable. And and we want to set it. And we want to set this as our new counter value. And we want to set this as our new counter value. So we're just going to drag and drop our variable while holding control. So we're just hmm. we're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable. And we just want to set it. The, we're going to we're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable. We're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable, and we want to set it as our new count. And we want to set this as our new counter. Oh. We're going to tell it. We're going to tell it to add one to our counter variable, 
and we want to set this as our new counter value, so we're just going to drag and drop our variable while holding control to get a node that will set it. And we and and then we can and then we can plug our new value into our set counter node. So now linking up all the arrows, whenever a player walks into the trigger, it will add one to our counter. Now we want to do the same for the exit node. Now now we want to do now we want to do the same for the exit node, but get it to but get it to subtract one from our counter. But get it to subtract one from our counter. Just copy and paste it down here. In this case, I'm just going to add negative one to it instead of creating an int subtraction node. But feel free to create that node. But feel free to create that node if you feel like it. Now something that now something we need to add to our on trigger exit event. <coughs> now now something we need to add to our on. <coughs> now something now something we need to add. Now something we need to add to our on. Now something we need to add to our on trigger exit. Now something we need to add to our on tricky exit event is that we need to check to see whether or not the counter equals zero. If the counter equals zero, if the counter equals if the counter equals zero, we'll know that if the counter equals zero, if the counter equals zero, we'll know that there are, if the counter equals zero, we'll know that there is no longer any players inside the trigger zone, and so we can safely play the animator set ball node to turn off the ball and close the door. If the counter equals if the counter equals zero, we'll know that there's no longer any players inside the trigger. And we can safely, and we can safely play the animator set ball node to turn off the ball and close the door. So I just want to create, so I just want to create a branch node while holding B and left clicking. And so I, would, so I just want to create another branch node by holding B and left clicking. And as this branch node requires the ball value to work, I'm going to create an int greater than node and plug that, and plug that in. So so I just want to create another branch node while holding B and left clicking. And as this branch node requires a bool value to work, and as this branch, and as this branch, so I just want to create another branch node while holding B and left clicking. And as this branch node requires another, so I just want to create, so I just want to create another branch node. So I just want to create another branch node while holding B and left clicking. And as this branch node requires a bool value to work, I'm going to create an int greater than node and plug that in. This node will be used to check if my int is greater than zero. So I'm going to plug my counter value into the top slot. If it is, um, if it is not greater than zero, then we, if it is not greater than zero, then we want to close our door. So I'm going to take my, so I'm going to take the arrow from the false and plug that into my animator set ball node. If the value is, gr if the value is greater than zero, we don't want to do any. If the value is greater than zero, we don't want it to do anything. So we can just leave the, so we can just leave the true arrow blank. If the value is greater than zero, we don't want it to do anything, so we can just leave the true arrow blank. And so now, whenever the player walks into the trigger, it will add one to our counter variable before telling the door to open. If a second, if a second player walks into the trigger, it will also add one to the value. It will also add one to the value, and it will tell the ball to be false a second time, but that doesn't matter. If a second player walks into the trigger, it will add one to the value, and it will update the ball value a second time, but that doesn't matter. Then, when a player leaves the trigger, it will minus one from our counter int, and then check if that counter is less than zero. And then check if that counter is less than zero. If it is less than zero, and if it is, and only if it is, will it then play the set ball node and close the door? Awesome. And so now, if I was to play test this, we can see that when one. So now, if I was to play test this, we can see that when one player walks into the trigger, it opens the door, and when a second player walks into the trigger, the door stays open. When one of those players walks out of the trigger, the door stays open, and only if the other player walks out does the door then close. Awesome! However, while this works for most cases, there is still another problem. If a player was to walk into the trigger and then leave the game while inside the trigger, we can see that the door remains open despite the player no longer being in the trigger. Also, if the remaining player was to walk in and out of the trigger, it does not fix itself. This is because this is because when the player disconnected from VRChat, they never played the event. This is because when the player disconnected from VRChat, they never played the event on player trigger exit, and so the counter, and so, and so the counter had one added to it, but never subtracted from it. Now this also, now this also used to happen whenever a player respawned, but from my more recent testing, now this also used to happen when a player respawned, but my more recent testing shows that this no longer seems to be a problem. Either way, this isn't ideal. So how can we make it so whenever a player leaves the game, it doesn't leave the door open? Well, to do so. Well, to do so, we need to check to see how many players are inside the trigger when a player leaves the game. Well, to do so, we need to check to see how many players are inside the trigger when a player leaves the game. 
Well, to do so, we need you to see how many players are inside the trigger when a player leaves the game. Now, now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, but stick with me here. Okay, so, okay, so we first want to come back into our graph, and the first thing we want to do is we want to Okay, so we just want to come back into a graph, and the first thing we want to do is just full screen our graph with the shortcut Shift Spacebar. Okay, so, okay, so we, okay, so we want to come back into our graph, and the first thing I'm going to do is just full screen our graph with the shortcut Shift Spacebar. Now I just want to simplify it. Now I just want to simplify some of our code. Now I just want to simplify some of our code, as we'll make things a little easier later on. Now I just want to simplify some of our. Now I just want to simplify some of our code to make things a little easier later on. Duh. I just want to make. I just want to make this part of the, I just want to take this, I just want to take this part of the, oh, okay. I just want to make this part of the graph where we toggle on and off the ball and make that into a custom event. I just want to take this part of the graph where we toggle on and off the ball and make that into a custom event. So I'm just going to come over here and create an event custom node and I'm going to call this, and I'm going to call this check door status. And then when I grab our animate, and then I want to grab my animators and then and then I just want to grab my animator set ball node and plug that in. Then for its value, I'm simply going to grab our int greater than node and our counter variable and plug that directly in. So now whenever this event is called, it will tell our animator to be true if the counter is greater than zero and false if the counter is less. So now I can just delete. So now I can just delete this. So now I can just delete that part from the two events and replace them with an unum behavior send custom event node. And then we just want to. And then we just want to hit the drop down menu and tell it to play the event. And then we just, and we just want to tell it, and we just want to tell it, and we just want to hit the drop down menu and tell it to play the event check door status. Okay, so now that, okay, so now, okay, so now that we've done a little bit of cleanup, it's now time to create a bit of logic to check to see whether or not a player is still inside the trigger. We want this event to play whenever a, we want this, we want this, we want this event to play whenever a player leaves, we want this event to play whenever a player leaves. We want this event to play whenever a player leaves the game, so we're just going to create an event on player left node. Whenever this event is called, whenever this event is, whenever this event is called, I want it to reset our counter value. Whenever this event is called, I want it to reset our counter value. So I'm going to grab our set counter variable and I'm going to create an int constant node and create. Whenever this event is called, I want it to reset our counter value. So I'm just going to grab our set counter variable and I cr and create an int constant node set it to zero and plug that into our set counter variable. So now whenever this node is played, it will set our int to be zero. Now that the int is zero, now the now that the int is zero, now that the int is zero, the way I'm going to recalibrate this counter is I'm going to disable the collider, is I'm going to disable the collider on this object, wait one physics frame, and then re-enable the collider. Then if there was any plays then if there are any plays still inside the trigger, then, if there are any players still inside the trigger, it will play the event on player trigger enter and open. Th then, then if there are any players still, then if there are any players still inside the trigger, it will play the event on player trigger enter and keep the door open. Now, something to be aware of for those of you trying to adapt this script. Now, something for you, now something for you, now something to be aware of for those trying to adapt this script is that using the event on player trigger. Now, some now something to be aware of for those trying to adapt this script later on. Is that if you use the event now something you got now something to be aware of for those of you trying to adapt the script is that using the event on player trigger enter works differently from the non VRChat event on trigger enter. With the Unity on trigger enter, the event won't be called the event won't be called with the Unity on trigger in with the Unity on trigger enter, the event won't be called if the collider is re enabled while the object is inside of it. <coughs> it will only be it will only be called it will only be called when the ob it will only be called when the object enters the collider, not if it's suddenly inside of it. To do that, you would need to use a much more expensive event on trigger stay with a great deal of caution. However, today we are using the VRChat event However, today we're using the VRChat event on player trigger in <laughs> that's wrong with the dog. However, today we're using the However, today we're using the VRChat event on player trigger enter, and that does get called if a player is However, today we're using the VRChat event on player trigger enter, and that does get called if the player is found to be suddenly inside the trigger. This threw me off at first, so I thought I'd better clarify here. This threw me off at first, so I thought I'd better clarify here. Okay, okay, so now we need to turn off our colli- Okay, so now we need to turn off the collider that's on this object. So, to do this, 
To do this, we want to use a collider set enable node and we're going to call to do this, to do this, to do this, we want to use a collider set enable node and we're going to set and we're going to set our collider to be false. However, we need to say what collider we want to turn off. However, we need to say what collider we want to turn off and instead of creating a variable up here and instead of creating a However, we need to say what collider we want to turn off and instead of creating a variable up here to get the collider, I'm still going to use the node. I'm still going to use a I'm still going to use a game object get component node. I'm going to change it from type I'm going to change it from string to type and then I'm going to create a type collider node and plug that in and then grab the resulting component and plug that into a collider set enable node. So now whenever this event is called, it will come So now whenever this So now whenever this node is called, it will come down here and grab this game object. It will come down here and grab this game. It will come down here and grab this game object and we'll look to see and we'll look to see if it can find a collider component on it and then disable it. So now that we've turned off our collider, we need to wait. So now that we've turned off our collider, we need to wait a physics frame before we re-enable it. So now that we've turned off our collider, so now that we've turned off our collider, we need to wait a physics frame before we re-enable it. Now the easiest way of doing now the easiest way of doing a delay in udon is to use a del now the easiest way to do a delay in udon. Now the easiest way to now the easiest way of doing a delay in udon is to use a delay. Now the easiest way of doing a delay in udon is to use a delayed custom event. So I'm just going to use the so I'm just going to use the node udon behavior send custom event delayed by seconds. This node will wait a couple of seconds before this node will wait a couple of seconds before telling a custom event to play. Now you may be wondering why I didn't use an udon behavior send custom event delayed frames node, but that is because now you may be wondering why I didn't use an udon behavior send custom event delayed frames node. But that is because that node can only delay the event by either update or late update. Now you may be wondering why I didn't use an udon behavior send custom event delayed frames node, but that is because that node can only delay the event by either update or late update. Now you may be wondering why I didn't use an udon behavior send custom event delayed frames node, but that is because that node can only delay the event by either update or late update. Well, we want to wait a single physics frame. We want to wait for a single physics frame to happen, so we want to use the we want we want to wait for a single physics frame to happen, so we want to use fixed update, but that just isn't an option. Luckily for us, however, luckily, luckily for us, however, luckily for us, however, it isn't a problem to wait a couple more frames, so we can. Luckily, for, luckily for us, however, it isn't a problem to wait a couple more frames, so we can just use a send custom event delayed seconds node, and I'm just going to delay it by 0.1 seconds. Luckily for us. Luckily for us, however, it isn't a problem to wait a couple more frames, so we can just use so we can just use a send custom event delayed seconds node, and I'm going to delay it by 0.1 seconds. That is ample. That is ample enough. That is ample enough time. That is ample enough time for a physics frame to happen, but fast enough that the player will never know that the door wasn't doing anything during that time. That is ample enough. That is ample enough time for a physics frame to happen, but it's fast enough that the player will never know that the door wasn't doing anything during that time. Now we need, now we need to create now we need to create an event for this node to now we need to create an event for this node to call. I'm going to create another event custom node, and I'm going to call this re-enable collider. I'm going to grab our logic and turn off the collider, and I'm going to grab our logic to I'm going to grab our logic to turn off the collider and copy that for this event, but get it to instead turn off our collider. But instead, get it to turn on our collider. Then I want to come back to our Udon behavior send custom event delayed seconds node, and get it to play the event re-enable collider, and get it to play the event re-enable collider that we just made. So now, whenever a player, so now whenever a player leaves, it will. So now whenever our, so now whenever a player leaves, it will set our counter to zero before disabling our collider. After 0.1 seconds, it will re-enable that collider, and if there's still anyone inside that trigger, it will get it to play the event on player trigger enter, and it'll do that once for every player that is still inside the door. And I'll get that to do it once for every player that is still inside the door. However, when that happen when that happens, when that happens, they will play the event check door status, telling the door to stay open. However, if there is no one inside the door, which honestly is highly likely, However, if there is no one inside the door, which honestly is highly likely, it won't actually close the door, as as while we are setting our counter to zero, we are never actually telling it to play the event check door status. However, if there is no one inside the door, which honestly is highly likely, 
it won't actually close the door as while we are setting our counter to zero we're never actually we're never actually telling it to play the event chalk check door status however however if there is no one inside the door which honestly is highly likely it won't actually close the door as while we're setting our counter to zero we're never actually telling it to play the event check door status so i want to create another udon behavior send custom event delayed seconds node so I want to create another Udon behavior send custom event delayed seconds node. So I want to create another Udon. So I want to create another Udon behavior send custom event delayed seconds node, and I'm going to get it to call the event check, and I'm going to get it to call the event check door status after 0.1 seconds. This will mean, this will mean if there is only one person in the door and they were the ones to leave, it will close the door. This will mean that if there is only one person in the door and they were the ones to leave, it would close the door. So that should be all we need for our script. We just want to come up here and hit compile and then we can build and test with two players to test out the networking. So now that we're in the world, we can see that when one player So now that we're in the world, we can see that when one player walks into the trigger, it opens the door, and when a second player walks into the trigger, the door stays open. When one of those players walks out of the trigger, the door stays open, and only if the other player walks out does the door then close. And if one player was to walk into the trigger, another player walks into the trigger, and then one of those and if one of those pl and if one player was to walk into the trigger and then another player walks into the trigger and then the and then one of those players leaves the game the door remains open and then and then when the remaining player leaves and then when the and then when the remaining player leaves the trigger the door will then close awesome so hope you found this helpful feel free to leave a like on the video if you liked it leave a comment down below if you got any questions and feel free to check out some of my other tutorials that I have on the channel but until next time bye